The Easter story from the Gospel of Matthew. After the Sabbath, let's remember that until Jesus, the Sabbath was worshiped on Saturday. It was because of the resurrection that we moved our worship to today, to Sunday. Technically, the Sabbath is still Saturday. But because of our honoring the resurrection of our Lord, we Christians moved to Sunday and here we are today. As the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb and suddenly there was a great earthquake. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. That's why your clergy on Easter switch from our black robes to our white robes. Again, in celebration of the great story of Christianity of the resurrection. We're not angels. <laughs> well, Jeremy might be, but... but. For fear of this angel, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. See, notice the men faint. <laughs> the women listen. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he is risen as he said. That's why our greeting, when someone says on Easter, he is risen, you say, he is risen. He is risen indeed. He is not here for he is risen as he said. Come see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples. The word apostle means one who was sent. Um, the first actual apostles were women. We get so crazy about women preaching today. It should be appropriate for women to preach because women were the first ones who preached the central gospel, which is the resurrection. Indeed, he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, greetings. Here again, you have a difference between the women and the men. The women saw Jesus and knew him. The men, he was in his new resurrected body. Let's remember, we get a new body. This part of the good news is we get a new body, and that's good, because I've squoze all the toothpaste pretty much out of this tube right here. <laughs> but the women recognize it. Greetings. And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. We had preschool chapel uh, doing Easter, and for three and four-year-olds, the message was pretty simple. Uh, for three and four-year-olds, by the way, developmentally, you work on the difference between telling you something and showing you something. When you show a three-year-old something, it's better than just telling them. And so people who are professionals in early childhood don't just tell a kid something, they show a kid something. So I was talking to the kids about Jesus didn't just say heaven is real and that after we die, we live. He showed us he died and then he rose from the dead. He showed us his hands and his feet. He showed us it was him. He said, heaven is real. And so the good news is, if you ever lose someone in your family, Jesus not only told us, he showed us that heaven is real. All the kids got it because they're three. They get it. By four, they're kind of streetwise and surly. But at three, 
At three, they totally get it. They hadn't lost their innocence yet. They get it. One kid, of course, has to ask the ultimate resurrection question. Will my dog go to heaven? Because for a three-year-old, he has an old, sick dog. He's worried about his dog. Personally, I just want you to know my personal, professional opinion is that the scripture doesn't say anything against dogs going to heaven. You search them, search them. Try to find a thing against dogs going to heaven. It's not there. Spike the ball. So, we finished preschool chapel. And I'm watching the news. And the black hole picture. So fascinating to me. See, Einstein told us that black holes would look a certain way. You don't mess with Einstein. Now, other theorists came up and said, no, because of this and that and the other, they would look different. They would look like that or they don't exist at all or they'd look this way. But Einstein told us, you're getting this theme, aren't you? See, some of you are getting a theme. He told us black holes were real and they would look a certain way because the event horizon of stuff falling into a black hole would light up. So we finally cooperated across the whole world, had, had um, telescopes in, in places all over the world, took a picture, and we not only heard it was real, we saw it was real. Oh, by the way, Einstein won. Because he's Einstein. I mean, you know, who wants to mess with Einstein? It looked exactly as his mathematics had predicted it would look. I mean, to the circle, to the exactness. Not only did he tell us, but we saw that it was real. That's the difference between Copernicus and Galileo. You look back in your history a little bit. Copernicus says the sun doesn't rotate around the earth. The earth rotates around the sun. Church had a problem with him, but they didn't arrest him because he just said it. It was theory. Well, that's your opinion, they said to Copernicus. You get to have an opinion, that's your opinion. What's the difference between Copernicus and Galileo? Galileo had a telescope. He looked at it. He said, looky here, which is scientific for I not only told you, I showed you. You getting the theme yet? Are you getting the theme yet? I bet you are. I bet you're picking up. I know where he's going to go with this. And so Copernicus didn't get in trouble with the church, but Galileo did. Why? Because the church was unbending on they had said. Now, it doesn't say anywhere in Scripture, but they had said that the earth is the center of the universe. Because it made sense because of their 1100s theology. Galileo said, look at Jupiter. There's even stuff going around Jupiter. And he showed them and it became scientific fact. So now that we hear this, let's go into the main gospel story. The main gospel story has two chapters. Christmas, God sent his only son to tell us and Easter, what he told us. So with Christmas, we celebrate with gifts, with holly, with all kinds of songs, that God is real because God showed us God's reality through Jesus Christ. But Jesus came to show us what the message from God would be. And we've been singing it, made like him, like him we rise. The great message at Easter and the great message of the entire gospel is this. Jesus not only said, my father sent me from a heaven that is real. Where I am, you will be also. Heaven is real. And then he told them he would die and he would live again. And, and it's hard when you just tell somebody something like that because it's hard to believe. But then he shows them. 
He dies, he stays dead for three days. And then he shows himself and says, it's me, look. Resurrection is real, life after death is real, I show you. And so he went around to all the disciples. He made a point to show all his disciples his new resurrected body. Remember, if you're going to see me in heaven, uh, Sharon has requested that I look like Patrick Swayze. <laughs> so if you see, are you, just walk up and go, hey, is it you, Patrick, or are you Jack? Because I get a new resurrected body and Sharon is the boss of me. So... <laughs> So Jesus shows us, and this is so important. He goes around to every place, and it's so important to the early church that the early church tries to save everything associated with it. They just try to pick up on this good news. It's so precious to them. And so pieces of the cross, the crown, the, um, one, of, one of the great fears in the fire in the church in Paris, one of the great fears in Notre Dame, Notre Dame, was to get that crown of thorns out of there. That crown of thorns had, had existed. Uh, their records go back before 400 of its existence. Um, it got over to Constantinople when the East and West Church separated out about a thousand years ago. It came back to the Western Church um, I read all the documentation of the crown of thorns all the way through centuries and centuries. Now, there were a bunch of shysters who were, who were thinking, I could get some stuff and I could sell it and make it look like relics. And so because of that, we lose some of our faith in relics and go, well, it's a bunch of guys who sold stuff that said it looked like that. Well, don't let a bunch of human dumbness get in the way of what actually happened, which was, it was so real to the early disciple, they took scraps of everything. Crown of thorns being one of the center things to them. Why? Because to tell you something is real is one thing, but to show you it's real is another. So relics became a great part of the early church so great a part that they began to be abused and people began to sell fake relics and all that kind of stuff. Humans can mess up anything God does. Remember that. Remember that. When you're trying to raise kids, remember, humans can mess up anything that God does. And I'm not talking about the kids, I'm talking about the parenting. We can mess it, God created it and we can mess it up. Believe me, my kids will be working out my parenting on a psychiatrist's couch the rest of their life. But that's not all. That's not the end of the Easter story. Because God, through Jesus Christ, didn't just tell us heaven is real. He showed us so we could experience it's real. And relics aren't the main way. In fact, they're a very minor way in which it becomes real. If you keep reading the story, Jesus says, wait, says, now, now wait for it. And what happens is he sends the Holy Spirit. He breathes on them. And they receive what you and I receive, which is the Holy Spirit that is the experience of the risen Christ in your soul. It is experiencing it more than a relic, more than the church at Notre Dame, more than him saying, look at my hands to the disciples. You and I have the experience of the risen Christ. And here's how that works. When you become a Christian, when you say, I claim the name Jesus Christ, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are given the Holy Spirit to affirm your faith, to live within you, taking that leap of faith that Christ is real, that heaven is real, that though your loved ones die, yet shall they live, and you have an inner 
affirmation. You have an inner experience of God that's better than reading the words, better than someone telling you, better than a preacher talking. John Wesley talked about it as his heart was strangely warmed and he felt that Christ died even for him. And he took the gospel personally and inside his soul, he felt the affirmation of the resurrection. He lost his fear of death. He knew that heaven was real. He knew that his sins had been forgiven. And he began to live a new and different life. Every Easter morning, I read the four gospel conclusions, the four resurrection stories, the four endings of the gospel. But that's not the end. As Jesus ascends into heaven, what happens next is the Holy Spirit descends upon our hearts. And we have a real experience that heaven is real, that we will see our loved ones again, that the things that defeat us in earth, the things that crucify us, the things that shame us will be defeated in everlasting life. And strangely, that gives us a new power to live today. Because knowing that death has no power over us, we're saying that today. O oh, death, O oh, grave, because through not just the telling, but through the showing of resurrection, our lives are changed forever. Disease, it doesn't defeat us anymore. It might defeat this body, but I get a new one. It might defeat my finances. It might defeat my living. It might defeat so much of my life, but it doesn't defeat me because living within me is the affirmation that heaven is real, is the Holy Spirit speaking to my spirit that life is victory. That's my hope for you today. Forget black holes and Copernicus and Galileo and relics in Notre Dame. You can forget even the scripture that, that has Jesus dying and then showing them that he lives again. Because you can experience God and know that it's all real in the still small spaces of your soul. And that's my prayer for you today. The resurrection is real because not that you heard it or it was told to you, but because you experience it, you feel it and you know it is real. May I pray for you? Shall we pray? Our Lord and God, there are hearts open to you like never before in this very room, watching us from afar, watching us from living rooms. Lord, turn our eyes beyond the shadows of this earth. And through the Holy Spirit affirming Jesus' resurrection in our victorious life, let us receive a faith that fears not. A faith that knows that resurrection is real. A faith that knows that the power over death is real. A faith that fills our soul to live a different life. Lord, through this faith, let us repent and confess through our self-awareness everything that doesn't glorify you and let it fall away from us like taking off dirty clothes. And let us shine forth in the next chapter of our life filled with faith. 
through your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, his death, his resurrection, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that now lives in our hearts. Lord, may this day be a day of memory for souls across the hearing of this word. That they embrace a new and eternal life here and now that makes the difference in the rest of their life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. My my, friend, my friends, as we close this service, we're going to sing a very special song. This song has said to Christians millions upon millions of time, my faith is real. Feel your faith as this music swells your soul. What's that?